president of our foundation, Yvonne's been grieving the loss of her husband, Bob. However, Yvonne has always put everybody else first. She's been there to drive the charity forward and from day one, and she's been at the heart of everything that we've done. She truly is a strong woman and an inspiration to us all. So ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Mrs. Yvonne Boyd. On behalf of the Bobby Ball Foundation, we thank you all for being here today. And now I have the great honour and the privilege of handing over to the incomparable Mr. Tommy Cannon. Yay! Thank you everybody who's turned up here today for the unveiling of uh, my mate's statue. Mm. I have to tell you then, gentlemen, this is the only time that he's ever been taller than me. <laughs> <laughs> he'll, be, uh, he'll be looking down and he'll be saying, see Tommy, I always told you I was taller than you. <laughs> um, I love him always will do to think that he picked me a guy who just wanted to play sport cricket football or whatever and when i was welding uh and i couldn't weld actually i, I had a relative at the firm and uh, he got me the job and um i remember being by the clock waiting to be assigned to the job and um this little man came in clocked in said hello cock walked away and as we were walking away, I thought, well, fine, that's a funny little fella. <laughs> and, and, you know, a few months later, he, he, um, he came straight up to me. He said, um, fancy making a double act? I said, sorry? Me? A double act? Are you kidding me? I said, Bob, I can't sing. What are you talking about? He said, well, tell you what, I'm at Roy Not fellas, he said. Friday night, he said, come down, he said. So I said, all right, I'll come down. I had a pint with him. And... Um, he, uh, he sang all night on, at the club, and uh, when he came off, I said, I can't believe we paid you for that rubbish, Bobby. And he, said, he said, no, he said, it's just one of them things. He said, this is what I do in this spare time. Then he asked me again, do you want to make a double act? I said, Bob, how many more times? No, I said, I can't sing. He said, right, tell you what to do, get a set of drums, he said, and I'll, I'll teach you a few riffs. Oh. Following day, I got some drums, walked into the factory. I said, hey, Bob, I've got a set of drums. He said, bloody hell, you're keen, aren't you? <laughs> and that was the beginning of, well, we had different names, actually. We were the Harper Brothers, Sherelle Brothers. And get this one, Bobby and Stevie Rhythm. <laughs> I don't know how we live with that name. <laughs> but yeah, and um, we, we formed a friendship that no one could no one could interfere with everybody said oh did you get on did you this did you that of course we had arguments for goodness sake 58 years together we had disagreements we had all sorts going on in our lives and but nobody but nobody could split us up and i think that was some people's idea of you know oh this is what we do we'll, we'll, we'll split them up and it, it never happened and god bless him I love him today. I love him like I've always loved him. We love Yvonne, we love all the family. It's just been one hell of a ride. And um, I, I can't thank you all enough because all you lovely people around here now, you all supported Cannon and Ball. Some, some, you know the Cannon and Ball movie, Boys in Blue? It's 40 years old. Yeah, you can say that again. 40 years old, I can't believe it. And the two boys, his two sons there, we're going to do a tour together. Yes! Go on, Tommy! Bobby, the legend, is life will carry on. Don't worry about that. I won't let it disappear. 
I thank you from the bottom of my heart for allowing me even to get up here and speak about my pal like that. And, um, we love you, Tommy. Yeah. Yeah. We love you, Tommy. Yeah. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. Yes! Go on, Tommy! Now, I think you'll agree, the setting for the statue is absolutely beautiful here in Lowther Gardens. Please welcome the chairman of the Lowther Gardens Trust, Teresa Mellibor. that I received a telephone call from Councillor Buckley to see if Lowther trustees would agree to the statue and for it to be in these beautiful gardens to honour and remember Bobby Ball. The trustees were unanimous in their agreement. So shortly after the 20th of November, the long journey began. We tendered, interviewed, uh, the potential sculptors and commissioned what we think is an amazing talent in our chosen artist. With the help of Yvonne, Joanne, Fileborough Council and the Bobby Ball Foundation, we have arrived at this momentous reveal of the statue. Bobby was the patron of Lauda Pavilion and we often used to see him here with that glint in his eye. He has generously performed here for the benefit of the theatre and was a great supporter of our future development project. It is therefore an honour for Lowther Pavilion Trust to have Lowther as the chosen location for this tribute to him and all that he stood for. And we look forward to welcoming visitors to the statue for years to come. You've heard a couple of mentions of his generosity well, I'm going to indulge and tell you one quick story. Bobby wrote a play called Rock Off Tommy. Rock Some Tommy. of you may have seen it. He brought it to Falco's Players, who, who I was then the chair of, and said, I want the players to do this play. And we looked at it. There was about 30 pages. A normal play is about 80 pages. And we said to him, well, yes, Bobby, it's very good, but I don't think it will fill an audience because it's not long enough. And it's really written for you and Tommy. And he said, right, we'll do it then. So I said, we can't afford you. He said, I said, we'll do it. Just pay Tommy his petrol. <laughs> <laughs> and that was Bobby's generosity. And thank you all for being here. Can I first just say a huge thank you to the, the Lowther Trust, the Plough Council and to the Bobby Ball Foundation for giving me this wonderful job. job. It's been a huge pri privilege and honour to do it. Um, I've had a ball and I've made a ball. Hey. Um, thank, uh, uh, it's my name on it, uh, but it's always a team effort. Thank you first to my beautiful family, Rebecca, Leo, Felix, I love you. Um, to, to, to Teresa, Denny, John, Jim, too many people to mention. Thank you very much for your hard work on it. 
uh, and of course to all of Bobby's wonderful family, most especially uh, Joanne and Yvonne, your kindness and support have been the beating heart of this project. Thank you. And secondly, more broadly really, there's been a lot of press about statues recently. And obviously we put them up to celebrate and immortalise great individuals. But to really deserve a statue, as Bobby definitely does, you need to stand for an idea that we all cherish. And Bobby's wonderful warmth, his open-hearted, gleeful love of laughter and life, represents one of the best things about being British. So, in death, <coughs> here you stand, Bobby, and you're just you, but also, I hope, an enduring monument to laughter and to love. <laughs> Lee Mack. I need to sort out the height of these people talking at me. <laughs> now, I, I have written something which I was, uh, I wanted to learn. But then I thought, well, Bobby never learned his lines, I'm not going out, so I'm not going to bother. Surprised <laughs> <laughs> he even turned up today, to be honest with you. Right. When... When I was told there was a, a money raising campaign to get a, a statue of Bobby made, I immediately uh, donated £2.40 in loose change. <laughs> and I did that simply because the size Bobby was, I thought, if they melt down the coins, that should be enough metal to actually make it. Um, but little did I realise just how big, big it was going to be. I mean, that is, I'm, I'm still convinced when the curtains come back, it's going to be the same size but on a spec ladder. So. Um, <laughs> But that is the right size for Bob. I really do think that is the right size because he was a little guy, but as we all know, he, he had a big personality, a large amount of mischief, and a huge, huge heart. Uh, and of course, his, his man boobs were quite big as well. So, I keep expecting him to pull the curtain back and go, I pick it, ain't you? Now, it goes without saying that he, Bobby meant a lot to me. He was, uh, even before I met him, I'd sit with my front of the t in front of the telly as. Graham just mentioned with, our, with my family as well and we absolutely loved the Cannon and Ball show we really did and, and when I was a teenager it was the early 80s and so-called alternative comedy was kicking in and it was the young ones and Ben Elton and French and Saunders but Bobby and Tommy they, they surpassed all that and they sat, survived and they stayed on our screen simply because they were absolutely hilarious and we yes, all, we all absolutely loved them and I love the fact that a lot of this new generation, they, they sort of a bit dismissive of the old school, but not with Bobby and Tommy. And I love the fact that Rick Mayle, one of my other comedy heroes, he turned up and he was on the Cannon and Ball show. And, uh, and like, um, like Rick, I felt Bobby always had a, an anarchy about him, an absolute real anarchy. You never knew what he was going to say next. Um, which was both exciting and absolutely terrifying. Um, especially when he was talking to some young, right-on, politically correct TV runner. <laughs> no, you can't say that anymore, Bob. Um, but he said that anyway. He, um, he played my dad in not going out for, for 12 years at the end. And um, in that time, the character he played, Frank, he did many things. He, he pretended he had two broken legs just so he could have a place to stay. <laughs> He got me arrested on my stag do. He lied and said a house was haunted just so we'd leave and he could have a dirty weekend with his girlfriend. And he tried to sing a, a boat for the insurance money whilst we were all still on board. And that was all one episode. And to play that kind of role and still be a lovable character is almost impossible. What we needed was a little man with eyes so twinkly he could get away with murder. And we found the perfect person. This is obviously the perfect place for this statue because Bobby and Yvonne, as all of you know, made Lytham their home many years ago and he would often talk about the place with great affection. And if I ever made the mistake of saying that he was from Lytham St Anne's, <laughs> he would always put me straight. Because apparently Lytham's a bit posh, right? <laughs> so my plan, if you're all in, up for this idea, is that at some point we all come back and we steal the statue and we put it in the car park at Aldi in Lytham St Anne's. 
because that would really annoy you. <laughs> so, give me chainsaws tomorrow, we'll have a go at that. Bobby used to say to me, he said, the difference between me and you, Lee, is that you're a comedian and I'm a comic. He used to say it all the time, and to this day, I have literally no idea what the hell he was going on about. <laughs> but whatever he meant, I suspect he was actually just letting me know that he wasn't like other comedians, he was different. And it's hard to argue with that, because Bobby really was a one-off. When they made him, they broke the mould. So, God knows what they used after that to make those little Star Wars Ewok figures. But... <laughs> <laughs> that was quite popular, actually. Bobby, Bobby was many things to me. He was a fellow actor, my fictional dad, my comedy hero, but more than anything, he was my mate. I loved him to bits, as we all did, and I miss him terribly. And this statue is a fitting tribute to a giant of a man. Yeah! everyone and I second that but I would like to thank Peter Taylor who is the chair of the Bobby Ball Foundation he has gone above and beyond as all the trustees have thank you all so much <laughs> I first met Bob when I was 18 he was, he was my type then he stood up and I thought no 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 not for me as I was five inches taller than him but look at the size of him now <laughs> He was a workaholic, never stopped performing, writing songs, scripts, plays and books. He would be so proud today and I know he would cry like a baby. He adored his family, he had a massive heart. I am so proud I was with him for over 50 years. I love and miss him, every minute of every day. And in Bob's own words, thank you, thank you, and once again, thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Can I also ask Tommy to come up and Bob's children, Joanne, Darren and Robert, as we get ready for the unveiling of the statue here in Lowther Gardens. We're going to do it on a countdown from ten. Make sure everyone is in position. Are we ready? From 10, 9, Nine eight, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Away. You gotta play me a tune, I sing me a song. I'm thinking how much life alone, just you and me. Come on and see, together we'll be okay. 